Hello, everyone out there. Welcome to Radio Free to Cipher. This is Evan Lorenz. And, of course, I'm Kyle Hoyer. You didn't sound as enthusiastic as I did. Oh, boy. I guess not. I, I Not that this is a battle or anything. Sure. Well, uh, we got a little bit of a short show today we because do. I have spirited you away out of the product development Well, department. there are a lot of deadlines that are being uh, needing to be met this week. Uh, you guys are leaving uh, very early next week to go on a show doubleheader. That's you guys right. have got uh, both San Diego and Gen Con back-to-back. Boy, oh boy. Upstairs, we are frantically working on both the two towers and the second edition, and, and there are just some insane deadlines coming up. So, wow we wow wow. Indeed. So uh, we don't have a lot of time to uh, to chit chat, unfortunately. But we are going to pack in a really quality interview here with one of the newest deciphering. I believe the newest deciphering. The newest, yeah. Out at the uh, L.A. offices, who works on the Star Trek RPG. That would be Jess mm-hmm. Heinig. That's right. And uh, he's I have, got some. I'm, I have a terrible time with his last name, much like my name. Yeah, I was going to say. I've been I saying mean, my name a lot longer. You well, know, but. people don't get my name very you know, often right either, so I have sympathy for it, but I want to be extra careful and, That's and right. get it right, is all. So, very nice guy. Yes, we're going to, in fact, go straight into that interview right now. All right, now we have Jess Heinig on the phone from the LA offices. How are you doing today? Doing great, thank you. Excellent, excellent. Now, you are brand new to Decipher, and as a matter of fact, you were out cashing your first paycheck a little bit earlier today, right? <laughs> Trying to. It seems to be a futile effort. <laughs> Did you just move up? Now, you're not originally from L.A., are you? You're from... Well, I'm actually a Southern California boy. Um, I've spent a little bit of time in Oregon, but I just moved out here from uh, the South. I was out in Georgia for four years working at a different role-playing game company prior to my stint here. Okay. So just kind of getting your feet wet now uh, again and uh, finding the apartment, finding the bank, all that fun stuff. Yes, I'm glad to be back where there's low humidity. (laughs) Oh, I miss those days. (laughs) Um, Now, you started last week, correct? Yes. Great, great. And tell us exactly what you're going to be doing for the RPG division out there. Well, I'm going to be the developer for the Star Trek role-playing game. What that means is that I take over the overall creative vision of how that game is going to come together. I decide what sorts of books are going to be appropriate to conceptualize and create for this game. I put together writing teams who are capable of writing those books, and then I take that material make sure that it's consistent, make sure that it's easy to use and understand, that players are going to like it, get a lot of use out of it, and that it's going to be able to simulate the feel of Star Trek within the bounds of what Paramount and Viacom would like to see from their license. Mm Mm-hmm. Essentially, I'm sort of the creative vision behind the whole series of game books, all of the rules, setting material, uh, and so on, that is basically the meat of how players grasp the Star Trek game. Wow. That's good stuff. Mm-hmm. What kind of... Uh, uh, now, the, the Star Trek uh, RPG is not very new. Uh, I'm sorry, it is very new. Um, it's just come out on the market. Um, people are just starting to get their feet wet with it. Uh What do you see the direction that you're going to want it to go in? Well, it is both new and not new in the sense that a lot of the development of the prior version of the Star Trek RPG by Last Unicorn Games had similar writers and similar style Mm -hmm. elements. So what we're going to be doing is taking advantage of the better relationship that we have with Paramount in terms of the license and our ability to put out books that are going to be more information filled for the players. In the the prior edition, there were, for instance, four different books to cover all the different TV series that were then extant at the time, and a lot of them had repetitive material. We no longer have to do that sort of thing, so we can build books that are basically just a lot of content. Um, The first year, of course, is going to be setting the mold for all of the, the background of Star Trek and all of the things that you need that might show up in the context of the game, your starships, your alien races, your strange new worlds. Um, once we've laid that sort of backdrop, then we can start producing books later on that get into more detail about specific story angles, exploring the Iconian ruins or uh, looking into what technology works like in the 24th century. Wow. Wow. You uh, you probably have to watch a lot of Star Trek to get all that. <laughs> Absolutely. Fortunately, I have good memories of watching Star Trek reruns with my dad when I was younger, so this is no onus. That's great. That's great. Yeah, we have uh, a resident Star Trek uh, expert here in the office as well, and he uh, he loves it. 
he loves watching the episodes over and over. Absolutely. And it's interesting, too, when you start approaching the Star Trek episodes from the game design perspective, Mm -hmm. you start noticing trends in the story arcs or in the building of characters that you may not have noticed before when you were just watching it as entertainment. Since there will be a lot of need to delve into facts for consistency or for the sake of presenting why a character does things the way they do, you have in the game really to justify the existence of anything that you print. If I say all Angosians are hot-headed louts, I have to be able to back that up with sure. stuff that's presented there. And so you start getting more of an attention to detail for what's going on. When you're sitting watching an episode, like if a new episode comes out, do you do you find yourself going, ooh, that would probably give you a plus four modifier or something <laughs> along those lines? I don't always speak of things in game terms like that, but sure. often I'll conceptualize that would be a neat thing to include in a game, or this could Good. be a great story hook. There are episodes, both old and new, that have provided a lot of different ideas for things going on in the Star Trek universe that you can pick up and run with in a game. In the old TV series, the original series, the characters would go from planet to planet or space encounter to space encounter, solve the problem of the week, and go on. But oftentimes, the problem of the week stemmed from larger underlying circumstances that your players could then pick up and deal with. Oh, that's great. Now, now... Do you have – it might be a little too early to tell us about these type of things, but do you have any really cool, like, background stories like that that you're working on right now? Well, a lot of what we have to do, of course, is presenting the information about what's already gone on in the Star Trek universe. But one of the approaches that we're taking is to look at those things that have gone on from the angle of how can you integrate this into your game and make something new. So the Alien World source book that's being written right now by some of the – freelance writers out there, is going to not only examine, here's where this world showed up and here's what happened, but here's the consequences of what happened and what's going to happen next. Play uh, old uh, Star Trek episode, I think it was The Wink of an Eye, the episode with the Skalosians who had some sort of radioactive water that made them move incredibly fast, a thousand times faster than normal people. Okay, so Kirk manages to figure this out and counteract the Skalosians' attempts to take over the Enterprise, but he never solves the problem of the poison in this water that's causing this thing to happen or the difficulties of the fact that the Skalosians react very badly to injury. They age and die incredibly fast. So all of these things are follow-ups that present great ideas for player-driven games. So what we like to do is take those stories and say, here are different ways that you can explore what's going on here. And uh, in all the different directions of Star Trek, the earlier editions of the game really focused heavily on what Starfleet was doing, because that's what we see in most of the shows. But Mm -hmm. here, in the current edition, we want to say, here are all the things going on in the Star Trek universe, and you can explore it from any perspective you want. If you want to play a group of Klingon mercenaries and entrepreneurs who are trying to sneak over to Scalos and get some of this water so they can use it to make black market intel deals, you can, and this sort of thing is covered in the different story ideas that we're trying to present. Wow, I want to play in your RPG group. (laughs) We do (laughs) actually have a Thursday night group here at the office so that we can test out the things that are going on. Oh, that's great. Wow, exciting stuff, man. We're looking forward to to all the great things that's going to be coming out uh, of the Star Trek RPG that you guys are working on. So there you have it. Uh, Thanks, uh, Jess, for sitting down with us. Uh, A lot of good info packed in there. we're a little goofy this afternoon, I think. Yeah, I think it's that we've got so much stuff to do that we're just kind of like not concentrating yeah, on RFD to, or something. We have to take our humor where we can get. Not that RFD isn't very important. That's right. Yeah, it's, it is the most important. It's thing. just uh, in a sea of activity that's, that's going great. on here at the office. So we hope you'll forgive us for. All right. Well, you know what? We're going to try and uh, maybe do a remote from San Diego next week. Maybe I will call in. This is news to me. And uh, <laughs> yeah, that'll be fun. Maybe we could even get uh, one of the celebrities. Who sure. knows? But uh, I'll try and call in from San Diego next week and cool. uh, do a live remote from San Diego Comic Con. Uh, live on on tape because you know. That's yeah, that's how R F D works. And then, but yes. then you're going to be at Gen Con with me, so there no. will be no. You're not going to Gen Con. No, I'm stuck in the office. Well, then we might have two live remotes. Yeah, well, you just might of R F D. So, uh, fun stuff. All right. Well, thanks everyone for listening, and uh, we'll see you next week. Have fun on the road, Kyle. Bye.